educate, please, this panel of experts here, and I say that with quotes around it, Loosely. <laughs> about why this sort of throwing money at the issue, bailing, bailing, bailing out, may be potential, potentially reckless and damaging for the future of this nation's economy. Well, in order to understand that, you have to understand how we got into this mess. We got into this mess by spending too much, borrowing too much, and inflating too much. Government was too big, and we had too many regulations. We had rejected the market economy for decades now. We had rejected the notion of sound money for decades. And we got our, into a mess this way. So what is the proposal? Spend more money, borrow more money, print more money, regulate more so. So it makes no sense whatsoever. So we're going to make the problems much worse. We're doing exactly what we did in the 1930s. We are determined to take a serious recession and turn it into a depression if we don't change our ways. When governments spend money, they spend it in a non-productive manner. And every penny the government spends, they have to take it out of a productive source of money. The money has to come from somewhere. Everybody talks about the money that's going to be spent and how, about, how many wonderful things will happen. But but they never say, where does the $825 billion come from? That's the question they have to ask, and they have to find an answer to that to fully understand why what we're doing is absolutely wrong. All right. Okay. Con 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 okay. Let me ask you. I mean, I understand where you're coming from here, I think, sort of. You know, but the house is already on fire, and I think no matter who, no matter yeah, what I mean, we think how the headlines. fire began, the house is on fire. Our house is on fire. So let's take one industry specifically. Let's take the automotive industry in this country. Are you saying spend no money on the automobile industry in this country? That American automobile manufacturing let it disappear? Well, I, I think you're cr correct. The house is on fire, and you think you're putting water on it, and I think you're putting kerosene on it. Okay. And uh, that's the big argument. No, you take the car industry. Yes, I think we should put more money into the car industry, but it should come from private sources. It shouldn't come from government, because government will divvy out the money politically. But there are private sources of money. Yeah. If there's anything of value, it'll be bought up. But you don't, you can't value anything when the government buys up uh, assets that aren't sellable. You buy up <laughs> worthless assets. So there's some worthless assets yeah. in these car companies. So if you want good money to go into car companies, you have to allow real capital to flow into it. So you, yes, you do want that. You just don't want the government to do so, it. So what systemic changes, if you look at tax policy, which alters flow of capital, as you, as you know well, if you look at whether it's a spending or, or any other aspect of the use of money, interest rates, monetary supply, etc. What well, systemic what change would you put in? Would you exploit this opportunity to change the system of capitalism in America for the better? How would you change it? Get rid of the income tax. Get rid of corporate taxes. Get, and, and really lower taxes. But you have to lower spending. Would you add a you consumption tax to make up for that? Would you, would you put a consumption oh, no. tax in? How would you make up for the lost revenue on income tax? I agree with you on income and business tax. I just don't know where you get the revenue elsewhere. And I would argue well, I'm not, I'm, not inter I'm not interested in getting the revenues. I want to cut spending. But the problem is, is nobody wants to cut the American empire. Even Obama's uh, administration wants to increase spending overseas and increase military spending. As long as you want to run the world empire at a trillion dollars a year, believe me, you cannot solve this problem. And uh, that is where the crux of the matter is. So yes, you have to cut spending along with cutting taxes. So to say, well, let's have a consumption tax, that's just transferring the, you know, the penalty to new victims. But you well, want to get taxes down, you want to get rid of regulation. You don't want to do what we did after the Enron failure passed Sarbanes-Oxley, you know, by the conservative Republicans. That's the fault. It's in the thinking that we need so much government. Mm -hmm. Wait, Congressman, are you, are, Congressman, are you really saying that, that given the meltdown on Wall Street and some of the craziness that we saw at Citigroup and Merrill and other places, that there should be less regulation, not more in some cases? Yeah, we should have more on the Federal Reserve so that we know that we're doing. They're exempt from regulation, as is Treasury. We give Treasury $350 billion, and we don't even know but, where but, they but, spend but, but what about it. That's Street, the type of regulation you want. But what about on, what on Wall Street? Do you, do you not want to see, on some of these derivative products, do you not want to see there be some kind of regulation in terms sure. of, uh, of what the banks can do? 
Sure, anybody who commits fraud goes to jail, just as they did in Enron. We didn't need Sarbanes-Oxley to prosecute everybody in Enron through, uh, through the laws of, of fraud. If they commit fraud, they go to prison. Just like Madoff, you, you, you know, we had all those regulations, SEC and everything else, and he got by. Did but, 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 it but proves SEC not, didn't work. But, Congressman, it's not just fraud in some cases. In some cases, people had very little equity put down and were leveraging things up tremendously. Should there not be regulation about how much equity you effectively have to put in the deal or how yeah. much capital you have to have on your balance sheet? Sure, and if you understand uh, leveraging up equity and, and debt, you have to look at fractional reserve banking. That's where you pyramid debt. Mm. So they're doing exactly what the Federal Reserve does, is they create money out of thin air and they pyramid debt. That's where the bubble comes from. That's why you have to look at monetary policy. Yeah. But you're looking at the symptoms rather than the cause. Hey, mm. Congressman, hang, hang with me for a couple of seconds here. I am extremely limited. And 90% of this conversation that you've been having with Dylan and Carlos has gone way above my head. But your basic theory, let's get government out of nearly everything. Let's swing back to what I do nearly every morning. I drive to work on roads filled with potholes beneath bridges that are crumbling. What's the answer here? Do I go out and try and find six carpenters and some bricklayers and some masons to fix those bridges and bridges, roads and bridges? What, what, government's got to do it. What, what, what's the deal here? What is your point of view about stuff like that? Basic reconstruction of this country. Okay, I know I can't have my perfect society quickly, but what I would do is quit bombing bridges in Iraq and then paying to rebuild them, and then wasting the money in the rebuilding over there. I would take that money, save it on the deficit, cut the deficit, and spend some on our infrastructure. Okay. That's what I would do, and we could do that. But as long as you do it through debt financing, it's impossible. Ideally, roads and bridges should have been taken care of by our states. It wasn't designed in the Constitution that the federal government would take care of every bridge and every road. But that isn't the worst type of spending. And I think in the interim, we certainly could. We could cut the spending overseas. But we're going to bring ourselves to our knees. We're going to have a dollar crisis. We're doing yeah. exactly what Obama, Osama bin Laden wanted to do, what he did to the Soviets. He's bringing about uh, financial chaos to this country. And we got to realize excessive spending that is a problem. It's not that we need more so, government so spending. Ask, that ask, to me is foolish. I want, I want to ask you the same question I've been asking myself, everybody on the set. I asked Tucker. I asked Pat, I'll ask you. In reality, and forget the, the perfect, your perfect society, mine, or anybody else's. In reality, we're going to lose millions of jobs over the next year or two. In reality, our banks have been mismanaged horribly as a result of both the bankers and the politicians, in my opinion. And we're now dealing with that. What would you do? We, in other words, saying what you don't think should happen has a value to a point. But in reality today, what do you think the American politicians and bankers ought be doing? I wouldn't pretend that pouring kerosene on the you started with I would. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted you to start it with I would. Okay, what I would do is allow the liquidation of debt to occur. You want the people to spend more money in buying up assets. You want these assets uh, priced in the marketplace so we know what their values are. That's why that first package of but the. But no one uh, in the market uh, will do that. As you know, I, I, then I want no that. Then there's no value too. there. That's a good information, then there's no value. Why should you dump that on the well, American taxpayers? That's a strong message agreed. that if it's worthless, you don't dump it on agreed, the taxpayers. That's, that's why looking. our slump is getting worse. What, how do you get this country healthily to, where, to your perfect society, where there's limited taxes and free markets and innovation reigns supreme, and me and Willie are on the beach you know, getting drinks served to us from robots, but that's not where we are today. How do you well, get you, that? How do you, you have how do you deal with the reality of the problems of this country? Well, the reality is you have to liquidate debt and get rid of the malinvestment. If you don't do that, you can't do it. But what you're doing now is you're working on the destruction of the dollar. There's a pretense that you're going to yeah. improve things, but you're really going to destroy the dollar. And a financial I crisis this, that we I have, have today concern, is going to be a dollar crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, con con I know the risks. Real quick, real quick. Con Congressman, quick question. Would you be willing to accept unemployment in the double digits, 14 to 15 percent, for several years, if in your mind that's what it took? to fix our fiscal house. 
Well, it's better than 20, but uh, I wouldn't be responsible. The people who created the bubble would be responsible. Go, go, go talk to Greenspan and ask him if he is accepting the responsibility for the 14 percent. So you can't blame the people who are trying to correct the problems on the unemployment. You've got to blame the people who created the bubble, the people who were delighted with all the okay. billions of dollars they were making in the, in the la right. last decade and or two. And I guess my frustration is I agree, with, with, I agree with a lot of what he says. The frustrating part of this is to try to figure out the constructive way forward right identifying the problems we can that the how, conversation keeps going to what everybody throughout the show it keeps going backwards back. Big up, and, and we don't know how to, to Obama's credit he's trying to move forward and it's going to be an interesting conversation. Congressman Ron Paul thank